how's it going? Good. It's a great hat. Oh, thank you so much. I love wearing hats when I when I exercise. But it's like all beat up and it's like the farm hat. It's just, it's, you know. It's seen better days, we'll say, but it's like one of my favorites. So I consistently wear it regardless. Even if it had seen better days, it's better the more beat up it is. Exactly. It's yeah. Like, it's authentic. Like, it's like your favorite old pair of jeans. They just keep exactly. getting better. <laughs> All right, well, we're just going to start. Um, welcome to the OFX podcast. I'm Dave Claxton, and along with me is one half of the dominant deco, DECA duo, Bethany McChesney. I couldn't say any of that right. I got not a single word out properly. They were all wrong. <laughs> That's right. And with us is Morgan Schultz. Morgan, back from injury, finally. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long hiatus. I I was technically recovered from my injury, like, 10 months ago maybe but I just took a pretty extended period of time off from competing racing everything so I'm sure we'll get into it a little bit yeah yeah and like so before we get too into that obviously we're going to talk a shit ton about DECA and we're going to make mm-hmm. Morgan say ass again because that was great last time and <laughs> the first thing I want to do is I want to go through just you know my part on the live stream and I want to say thank you to everybody who watched everybody with some amazing comments and support and really really made my day um and then the elites there like uh kent and rich and Riker, all were fantastic along with the women like yourself and and uh, vivian this everybody was super supportive and yancey unbelievably supportive and helpful so i just wanted to say thanks for that and thanks for everybody who came uh, came through and commented and said hi and all that stuff um i just want to quick turn the microscope on myself for a quick second though because I came out of there and I was super happy with how the individual race went. And I, I checked it out a little bit and, and my wife had watched it during to see how things were going or I checked things out periodically and it went really well. And I was really happy. And then I got home and I watched the team, the relay, which I was really excited about because it was such a cool race and it was shit. <laughs> it was <laughs> pixelated and there was like, and I was so pissed off and I didn't know why. And I was trying to figure it out and I've come down to two, two scenarios, which hopefully will improve it for next time. And one is that I did use Bluetooth earbuds afterwards because um, I had been screaming so much volunteering that I had lost my voice. And I didn't think the phone would pick up my voice talking if I didn't have a, a mic very close. So that might've put extra strain on the phone. I don't know. And then also when we did the first race, it was like eight, eight 30 in the morning. And the pier was dead. There was nobody there. Then when the, when the relay went, it was like 5 p.m. And the pier had thousands of people on it, like just mm-hmm. literally thousands using their cell phone, drawing signal. And I think that might be the real thing that got it. And so in hindsight, I had tested that when we went and tested. It was probably about 3 p.m. And it wasn't as busy on the Friday as it was on the Saturday. So we didn't have that issue. So Hindsight, maybe I should have recorded that one, put it up 30 seconds after the race and been like that, but I just, I didn't realize. So <laughs> I apologize about that and it will be better next time, but uh, hopefully there is a next time. So anyway, that was my thing. Um, beyond that, let's go right away. Let's dive into you two both were in the first wave of the women's race. And so Morgan, let's, let's go with you first, because this is kind of your return and really kind of both of your return to highly competitive but we'll start with morgan like how did mm-hmm. how did it come across this was the event you were even going to do so yeah so first off i wasn't going to do this until kind of recently because nick my friend nick um was like hey i'm going to be in chicago for deca fit you should do the race and i was like nah like i haven't really trained properly for it lately i've just been kind of like exercising not necessarily training But Nick was like, okay, well, I'm going to be in Chicago. Can I stay at your place? Um, And if I do, like, you should come with me. And if you're going to be there, you should just do it. And I was like, okay, fine. Like, you sold me. Whatever. Pretty solid (laughs) logic. Exactly. So we get there and I'm like, didn't have, like, any super concrete expectations, especially because this is my first race. And, like, so I don't even know how long, a while, that I was like, I just kind of want to go out there and have fun. And, um yeah. So I feel like I, I did do that. Like I did have a fun time. Um, I 
honestly, I didn't really know exactly what the stations were before I went there. So I was asking people like, okay, what's part of that? Like, what are the exercises basically? So I was kind of learning on the fly and like practicing in the, um, the warm up station. I've never used one of those sleds before. Um, I didn't know like the weights of certain things. So I felt like a newbie, honestly. Like I felt like I haven't ever done a race before because I was asking so many questions and I just felt so, so new to racing. It seemed like, um, so I, I think my goal when the race went out was to not go out too hard. Cause one, I didn't, I haven't, I just don't trust my fitness right now. So I thought I would blow up if I decided to go out too fast and I knew there was going to be a lot of good runners. So I was like, okay, just kind of like hold the reins back a little bit and then just hold on for dear life. And I mean, the first 500 meters ish didn't really seem that fast. So I was like, okay, this is, this is good. Like, I don't want to hurt so badly early on. So I felt like I did a decent job kind of like learning to go back into that pain cave. Cause it's been a long time since I've like raced or like hurt that badly, I guess. Um, and it was like, a, it was a interesting feeling. Cause I, I got there at around the skier and I started to kind of like hurt pretty badly. And I was like, man, this sucks, honestly. Like, <laughs> like I like that in a long time. And it was so, what a new feeling it was for me right now. I was like, oh my gosh, this is what racing is like. I totally forgot. Um, so I think I did my best to kind of hang on. Um, I'm sure I could have like pushed myself more in the moment. I was like, this is as hard as I can go. But like in hindsight, I'm like, man, like you are not used to the whole pain cave, Morgan. Like that's just something new that you're going to have to get back into and, and learn to learn to love basically. Um, so I think my goal going, I didn't have any expectations and I did have a really fun time. I enjoy DECA a lot. Um, and I think it's something that I can kind of adhere to like the training for DECA. I can adhere to more than high rocks ish training. Like my schedule right now, it's like my job is just too hard to consistently get in training. And that's kind of why I kind of veered back from racing is because I, I just have very minimal time right now. Um, so yeah, I think overall it was super fun and it was nice to like meet new people, see old faces and, uh, catch up with everybody. So Beth, you went and do it to like the same thing. This is your, your, your kind of comeback, at least for this. And, and really your first hybrid race since the high rocks you did. Yeah. Like, beginning one, of 2020, I did high rocks. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, a very different one too. Like, like Morgan said, right. Like your high rocks is very different than DECA. So you going in, yeah. how are you feeling? Cause like, were you more nervous because you had more expectations or? Um, I was nervous, but uh, yeah, there was definitely a bit of expectations. I was more nervous because I felt like I hadn't put in any work on, um, like, I don't have a bike. I'd never touched the, the sled. Um, the machines, I, although I do a bit of work on them, I still, I still struggle pretty hard on them. So I was kind of nervous about how that would all play out. And, um, still with coming back from my injury, which I feel like it's been a long time coming back, but I, the speed work side of things, I've really only been able to do consistent speed work with my Achilles over the last few weeks. So my, I'm, I'm a solid runner, but I don't, my top speed isn't really quite there yet either. So I just didn't know how all of that would play out, but I was really excited about it because all these stations are ones that I can do like with high rocks. Um, there was things that like the sled, I, I was barely even able to pull the sled. So this one was definitely more suited for me, which is what made me excited about it. And it just the, the whole feeling, especially in these big venues, like the one on Navy Pier, it's that whole, it's reminiscent of indoor track where you're just, it's high paced, uh, there's music, like um, you're not dealing with the elements, it's indoors, people can see the whole thing. You're not off in the trails, like totally alone for large sections of time. Um, so just that intensity and it's, it's, it felt like it was over as fast as it started. Like there was moments like on the bike for me, it felt like it was an eternity because <laughs> I just felt like it took me so long, but otherwise I felt like all of a sudden we were coming up to the last station and it was just over so fast. Um, and yeah, there was a lot of lead changes and I did take it out hard, but again, I knew that I had to really lean on my running in order to kind of stay in the mix a little bit. So, um, yeah, a lot of lead changes, especially around the machines. And again, I, I, I wasn't shocked that the machines kind of 
were what gapped the leaders on me, but I, I wish I could close that gap a little bit more. So I know what I need to work on, but yeah, I had so much fun in the individual race too. So if we go through it, we, we take off from the beginning and you guys went out fast. So let's just kind of break it down. You're going out at the beginning. And like you say, it appeared like Beth, kind of you and Laura yeah. kind of took the charge. Yeah. I knew Laura would go out fast. She's a really good runner. Um, and on the start line, Ashley Heller was also super nervous because she's been sick and she wasn't sure. And she's like, you're not going to go out fast, are you, Beth? I'm like, ah, I don't think so. <laughs> like, I'm not too, too fast. And then we hit about 100 and Ashley was like, you lied to me, Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> and she was right there, too. Um, and Ashley is also a former track runner and like that's her that's her thing too. So it was just, it was really fun, but yeah, we did take it out a little bit hot. Me and Lauren and Ashley was right there. And then we were together in and out of the, the lunges also. Yeah. Now the lunges. Okay. So different technique for lunges. And I want to talk about these later on with, the, with some of the rules and stuff, because well, we were lucky enough not to have any negative complaints on the live stream. There was some talk about rules and technique and stuff. So mm -hmm. Beth, you use that twisting technique. Yeah. And I mean, that's something. Which that I hadn't do. practiced, but I saw all of the elite men do it. And then when I tried it in the warm ups, I realized it's faster and it fatigues your quads less. So I just went for it. Now, in fairness, I did say to do it beforehand, but that wasn't yeah. good enough. <laughs> I <know. laughs> well i don't i just don't it, like doing something enough. for the first time in a race but then yeah then you see the guys do it you're like okay maybe i should try it <laughs> and then morgan you were pretty much straightforward just the classic kind of reverse lunges i didn't even know twisting was a thing yeah i just picked it up and i was like all right i'll just lunge and we'll see what happens and i'm pretty sure i was dead last after the lunch <laughs> 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 my legs are so long and I didn't have any I had no idea I just was shoot I'm getting a call sorry that's okay uh, sorry I got a call and I think I accidentally accepted it <laughs> and then it kicked me out that's okay <laughs> so, sorry about that <laughs> no worries no worries <clears throat> so you were you, you said you figured you were dead last <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was dead last because I remember dropping the ram and kind of looking around like the lunging area and I didn't see a single person. I was like, oh my gosh. I felt like I was lunging so fast too, but like, there's only so much I can do. Like my legs are so long. Like I didn't, I just assume like, I'll just pick it up and lunge quickly. I didn't want to go too fast because I didn't want to blow up my legs. But honestly, I think I had to go a little bit faster to kind of like maintain contact in that first zone at least. And then, and then, so you guys took off and coming to the rower was fairly similar. I think Morgan, <clears throat> you might've made up some ground on that run mm -hmm. on some of the girls, but Beth, again, you and Laura came into the rower pretty much side yeah. by side. Yeah. And I could see her, her pace. And, um, I was about 10 seconds slower, which I assumed I would be 10 to 20 seconds slower than most of the girls in the rower. It's again, that's just kind of my pace. Like I've tried to really work on it, but, um, yeah. And I don't even know if my form's that great, but it's hard for me to really row a fast, fast pace. So yeah, she did get about 10 seconds on me on the rower. And, and this was a scenario where, where one of the people commented and said, what a difference one station can make. And especially yeah. like Morgan, you went from in the back and this was pretty much where you made your move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I caught up a little bit after the second run after the lunges and then Going into the rower, I know the rowing is a generally a strength of mine. And I just felt like I needed, I had no idea what pace to pull, but I just wanted to pull at a pace that felt relatively comfortable for me. So I settled into like 154, 155. I'm like, okay, this feels pretty good, or I feel like I'm kind of recovered. Um, and I just so happened to, you know, pull a good 500 and kind of like see myself up in the top three, I think at this one through three, I, I can't remember where I was, but I was in contention at that point. Yeah, I think that maybe it went out probably, I think at that point, and I mean, I could watch it and see, but I think it was Laura and then Vivian and yourself kind of, mm -hmm. and that's where you and Vivian almost linked up wearing similar outfits and were an incredible pain in the ass for me because right? <laughs> I, one of them is there. I know it. <laughs> yeah. And I think Holly made her move in there too, because I think oh. she went out with Laura mm -hmm. and then I went out fifth. Yeah. Holly had a spectacular role. Like she... Yeah 
she and she was one of the ones like if you watched Morgan and Vivian, it was like a controlled, you know, smooth, not such a high stroke rate. Whereas Holly was going at this massive stroke rate. She was like really putting it. I, I can't roll like that. I don't I don't like that. But it seemed to really work for her. Mm-hmm. So out on that run, you came out there and then we're into the box jumps or step overs or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how did those go for you? So again, I didn't really know how to do, well, like I didn't know the most efficient way. Like I hadn't really practiced box step overs without jumping, right? Like usually mm-hmm. when I do box step overs, I usually box jump overs, but that's mm-hmm. not the most efficient way. Like you're going to get really tired when you're doing like 20 or however many, 20, 25. Um, so Honestly, I saw the men like stepping over. I saw people in the warm up zones like stepping over it. And I was like, okay, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, so I just went in there. I was like, okay, I'll step over it. <laughs> and I felt, again, I kind of felt like a newbie. I was like, am I doing this right? How many am I supposed to be doing? Um, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I don't know if I lost ground. I'm assuming I didn't make up ground on that, but I don't know how much ground I lost. Um, but again, going into it and leaving it, I just, my goal the whole time was just not like to hurt, but to not hurt too much. Cause I was scared of kind of like feeling that pain again. I kind of. <laughs> and Beth, that was kind of a good, that's a good station for you. Yeah, it is. It's some, I do practice those a lot, but yeah, I think we went in the same and went out the same. Okay. Like with our placing on that one. Yeah. yeah. Everybody seems to kind of had that dialed into a, like, even if, if you're really good at it, you're maybe three seconds faster than someone who's not really good at it. Yeah, it, it, right. it. It's not a great spot to really make a move. I mean, I've seen a guy like Van Tran, who is just amazing at it. Maybe, maybe make a bit of a move there, but most are pretty, pretty similar. Um, right. So after that, we move on to the med ball sit-ups, which is again, something not a lot of us practice in that fashion. And it, feels pretty because that was the first time I've tried it too it feel really kind of awkward yeah that I think that was my gut uh reaction was when I tried those during a race and I was like this is just doesn't feel right for my body like I I didn't really know how to do it quickly and then Vivian was sitting next to me me and Vivian were next to each other and she was just repping them out like crazy and I was like there's no <laughs> keep up with her and I think it was at that point that she, when she finished those, that she kind of started to pull away and I just mm-hmm. couldn't catch her on the run. And then she just kind of kept pulling away after that. But that station was just so awkward for me going into it. I was like, oh, that's not that bad. We're just, you know, doing crunches with some weight, but just throwing it up to the target and then catching it. And like, there's a lot of coordination, honestly, that goes into that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, Bessar. Yeah, I... I only feel that in my shoulders. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no core legs. Like it's just a hundred percent shoulders for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's more like a, when you lie on the bench and do like a weighted pullover seems right. to be yes. a, a similar yeah, feeling than, than, a, like. than a crunch or a sit up. Now, if you're doing the the regular, like in a deck of strong, the med ball sit ups where it's straight up and, and you have to sit all the way that, hits you a little more in the core but it's just the first time I did it I was like I thought I thought it would feel very natural because I'm I do a lot of good core work I mean it's usually a strength for me and I was like this throw just feels awkward and weird and timing of it and Mm -hmm. and all that so I don't know but that yeah you're absolutely right Vivian made a massive move on that Mm -hmm. and it does show that that station if done well can be a game changer at least a leg recovery station too which is Mm -hmm. nice at this point yeah yeah, because you're you're what four deep and, and yeah. starting to feel from all those runs. Yeah. So that shook it up, and like you say, Vivian came out a bit. I'm not sure where where you came out on that one, on Beth. Um, I was still in fifth. Yeah, still in fifth, and yeah. then you guys came back around. I think I don't think there was any changes. I think that you know Vivian kind of maintained her lead, and mm-hmm. that I think Beth, you did pull a little bit up up a little bit on the run, but not quite all the way, and then yeah. into the skier which, and I'll go with that for you. That must've been like kind of disheartening. Cause you're like, I've just made up ground and now I'm at the freaking skier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the skier, I am not fast on. It actually probably elevates my heart rate. Like one of the highest of any of the stations. And more, how do, I, how find, you- I have to stroke. I have to go so fast to try to get a long pull. And I, I even jump at the top. Yeah. Well, to get a you're bit. like you're getting like three inches of, of vert when you're yeah up to. yeah and that's just to try to keep 
kind of close to girls like Morgan and Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Like, and go, like, in. I didn't realize, so I generally think I'm decent at ski erging and I get to the ski erg and I start pulling and I'm pulling and I'm like, man, I am not pulling fast at all. Like I don't have any energy to pull sub. My goal was like sub two per five, like for the 500. And I was pulling like 206, 207. I was like, I can't, I cannot go any faster. Like, this is it for me. Like, this is, this is my max effort. I felt as though when I was pulling down, and I was kind of bending at the core, it would like take my breath away. So I wasn't really catching my breath. And I think that's what kind of made me have to like pull a little bit slower than I had imagined I would. Um, and again, I think Vivian put some ground on everyone in the ski erg station. I think she pulled pretty a pretty good split. And it was just something which unfortunately I think I lost time on. And I don't think it's something I should lose time on. Um, I just was not ready to kind of come into that skier with like a super high heart rate, I think. Yeah, it is something that I would have guessed that you would you would do well. And, you know, I mean, you have the height, you have the size and strength. I would have thought that, right. that, that would be something that would be speak to your advantage. But yeah, you would think I would have thought I'm like, OK, this is it. Like, I'm good at skiing, rowing, biking. But no, not today or not on Saturday, I guess. <laughs> and, and that was one that I noticed, too. Holly Hughes, again, she had a great, a great mm -hmm. skier. And I wouldn't have saw that coming. And Laura had a big improvement on that station from her previous Deca fit. Whereas that, that was a, sp a spot in her previous one where she started to fade. Yeah. And this time she, she was a lot better at it. So that, that was a definite difference from her. So you're off again. I think at that point, Beth, you dropped back a bit. I think actually Stephanie might've got you there. Um, Stephanie got me. She passed me actually, I think coming into the farmer's carry. Okay. So the next one. Yeah, I was still able or the, it might have been around there because there was some back and forth, too, with the running because I could mm -hmm. catch her on the run and she'd get ahead of me in the station. Yeah. So I thought she I thought she passed you in the skier and then that you would do the farmer's that. carry before her. Oh, OK, maybe that's what happened. Then I passed her on the run again. OK, yeah. All right. So you go to the farmer's carry and was it at all eventful for anybody? Honestly, I don't think so whatsoever. No, no, no. <laughs> Honestly, maybe it's because I was dying at that point, but I'm like, man, these 40 pounds, it was 40 pounds, right? Yeah. 40 yeah. pounds. HI. Yeah. I was like, oh, 40 pounds. That's, that's light. Cause I'm comparing it to high rocks. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like, oh, that should be easy. Like I should be able to run with these things. And I don't know if it's just my heart rate was so high and I hadn't really felt that in a long time, but I felt like I was struggling with those. And I'm like, I shouldn't be, this is another station where I feel like I shouldn't be necessarily struggling, especially because it's only a hundred meters also. Yeah. But I don't know, for me, it felt a little bit hard and like a little bit worse than I had anticipated going in. So I think, and this, it's hit me hard too in some Sims. And I think it's because the med ball tosses shoulders, the skier is <laughs> shoulders, and then you grab the weights. So, because I have felt that too with this one. Yeah. Did you guys find, and, I, and you can compare this from high rocks, but I find the dumbbells, even if they're lighter, it's harder to move faster with them than kettlebells because of the way that it's shaped and it, it hits the side and the front and the back of my leg when I try to run with it. Uh -huh. And that's so why dumbbells harder. Yeah. Because as I'm running right, the edge of the dumbbell hits the front and the back of my leg as it's hanging down beside my legs. Whereas kettlebells, I find they, they just move across smoother. It's just something I've noticed for me anyway. So even though it's a lighter weight, it still was a bit of a pain in the butt. Yeah. I think well, Sorry, what was that, Morgan? I, I said, I think I kind of noticed that as well. I was like, I think it's the the way the weight is distributed on the um on the dumbbell is like different, right? It's like, like you yeah. know, weight on the end and the the uh the kettlebell is just one ball of weight basically. And also I feel like when I'm doing farmers carries at my old gym at least, like I would only use kettlebells. So maybe it's just because like I'm used to that rather than a dumbbell. But yeah, I kind of thought it felt a little bit awkward. Yeah. And I was thinking after I did mine, I was thinking that you see a lot of people like they let the front just drip, drip forward. And I didn't mm -hmm. do that. Right. I hold them horizontally, just straight across. And I'm like, maybe I should try that sometime because maybe that makes it easier to run with. I don't know. Like, I think the idea is that it rests then on the back of your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Like I never had a problem with the grip, right? The grip's not an issue, but mm -hmm. it was just 
awkward to move with it. And, and I was, I was thinking right. maybe if I let it, I'm going to try that in the future, just see if that, you know, buys a couple of seconds here or there. But after that, we are on to the ski or the, the bike. bike. Mm-hmm. It's everybody's favorite bike. <laughs> so <clears throat> going into the bike, how, how are you guys feeling? Morgan, you were in, I think you were still in fourth at this time. Yeah. So I think I was in fourth. And going into it, I felt pretty dead and I just wanted the race to be over. Um, except I know that like I can push hard on the bike, even uh, under fatigue. So my goal, I didn't, I mean, again, I didn't really have a goal, but I just wanted to like push harder than the other girls, I guess. Um, and going in the first like 15 calories, I felt fine. I was like, okay, this is, this is fine. It's going well, but I just hit a massive wall the last 10 calories. Like I really, really wanted to stop, take a breath, reset, and then continue <laughs> so bad the last 10, it just hit me like a wall. But Nick um, was kind of there telling me like, okay, you're pushing this many Watts harder than this girl. Like you got, like, you're going to put time on them. And I think I still put some decent time on people. I was so disoriented after I just wanted to get to the finish line. So I just did what I could, um, slow down the last 10 calories for sure. But I think the bike is probably a decent strong suit of mine. Didn't you come out in second after the bike? Yeah. Yeah. I came out in second. I think it was, yeah. Vivian, I guess was way ahead. And then it was me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I think that's where Holly and, and Laura all of a sudden joined up, became like joined yeah. at the hip at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, Holly made up time on the bike. Yeah. Yeah, she did really well on the machines. She yeah. really did. Yeah. She, I think she stood up the whole time on the bike too. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. I, if not most of the time and would sit down for little breaks. Okay. I've, I've yet to find that effective for me. Yeah. Th- I don't think that would work for me. <laughs> Like, I, it just feels, I don't know. I, I with, with the, your arms moving at the same time, I don't know. I'm going to play with it and try, but I just, yeah. she had the big, like the arms up high, like this, right? Yeah. With the elbows up and yeah. And I get that. Cause it means you're pushing down on, on the, on the handles, as opposed to pushing straight ahead or forward. You, maybe she's able to use more of her body weight for that. And I've seen Killian and guys like that do that too, but I just, I don't know. I haven't found it as an effective technique, but mm-hmm. they're better than me. So what do I know? <laughs> so you come and another thing i found about the bike too and i actually think this is one of that one of the best things about their the design in the course is for the power athletes that get to the bike where that's where they're really going to be able to make their move it's also that point where like you say you're hitting that wall and you're yeah. like i don't know that i have it in me to make said move that i should be able to make here that i want to make so right it's just an interesting design point in the course whether that's intentional or just the way it happens yeah it really comes across well so I think this is where you play around too with do you ease up a little bit on the runs before because if knowing this one is really where moves can be made if you can lower your heart rate coming into it and then just smash the bike it also might be a strategy but again as you do these you kind of figure out what works better for you based on the, the stations that really hit you hard. Right. Yeah. I know that to do the bike alone, I have it in me to, to hit those 25 calories in around a minute. And it took me a minute and 50, <laughs> maybe That's 49, what... somewhere around there. What's that? That's what it took me. I think like a minute, 50, yeah. two minutes. I don't know. It was. <laughs> yeah. I was, That's... I think it was about a minute and 49 right around there. Cause I know in my previous deck of strong, I was just a little bit faster on this one, but I was on it and I'm like, I'm going so fucking slow and I know there's more there and I know I can, but it's just nothing left at that point. I hit that same wall you did. And I was like, Oh God. <laughs> and then to try to run after, I might as well just, you know, yeah, right. Should have just rolled around on the floor for a while. <laughs> so ha- after that, we head uh, to the, the tank. And again, for ball both ball of over you, walls. Oh yeah. Right. Right. Ball over walls. Yeah. You know what? So the wall over the, the ball over the walls, it's hard to really make a move at all there. Mm-hmm. It, it's another one of those for me anyway, that I seems like no matter how much energy you're putting in it, you're really kind of going the same speed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Although Holly did make a move somehow in this one too. She did Actually I got past here. I, I didn't know how many I had to do. And <laughs> I didn't, I thought it was 25 
and my I didn't have anyone counting I thought I had someone there like counting the reps for me and I was like at 23 and I went to go pick it up again I was like how many do I do and the person there was a volunteer there she was like 20 I was like oh shit and then at that point Holly and Laura had already just you know ran away from me and I was like oh man that was my <laughs> chance I think <laughs> so, I was a little discouraged after that one to be honest because again I kind of took my time through that for me that was like a break yeah I was like okay the ball's not that heavy like I can just take my time to go over back and over the wall and then by the time I was I was in the zone I kept going going and before I know it I see Holly and Laura like a full length ahead of me and I'm like gosh darn it next time I'll count <laughs> <laughs> why wasn't nick counting nick should have been yelling at you so i told it he's like i was counting and i'm like well why didn't you you sh you know deca you know it's 20 why are you letting me do 25 <laughs> i was like dude come on you're supposed to be there supporting me helping me out i hope you charged him rent <sighs> no you know what i didn't charge him rent but he did open a open a tab at the bar afterwards and That's i bad. think <laughs> that was enough <laughs> well he he did get a check that day, so he might as well. I know, right? I'm like, come on, spread the love. By the way, <laughs> should be said, Decca gave checks out right on the spot. Wow. Yeah. So big bonus. Well done. <laughs> Very cool. Also, guys, I got to wrap it up kind of soon because it's 640. I have something. All right. Cool. Um, anyway, you got to roll. That's great. Yes. You ended up, you finished fourth. You had. I finished finish fourth how's your feeling going forward you know what going into it I didn't have any expectations during the race I started to put expectations on myself I was like okay I'm kind of maintaining contact with the top three girls if I can finish on the podium that would be cool for me um and then of course we just talked about ball over wall um lost two places there and at the end I was just trying to have fun and hold on I was like okay maybe the podium's not in the cards for me today but you know this is kind of my comeback into competitive racing so you know I took it in stride I had a good time and I met new people and connected with old so I think going forward I'm my goal is to put more time into training um like I said right now it's a little bit hard with a new job but I think you can see me at more deca fits in the future awesome well hopefully we'll see you soon and hopefully we'll have you back on really soon Morgan thanks so much yes. we appreciate it thanks guys and, I appreciate uh, it we'll talk soon thanks Morgan all right talk soon I wanted to talk to you about a couple more things. Anyway, yeah. you came through, but we'll just finish up with you. You came through. How was the tank push? Cause you'd never done it before. Um, yeah. So the tank wasn't heavy at all. It, it's just, it's just awkward. And, uh, yeah, there's this, it's resistance, um, on the tires. So you can only, you can only push it so fast. Like you can push it as hard as you want. And it just didn't feel like it made up significant gains in, um, in the speed. So, which was kind of frustrating, especially I found on the pulling it backwards, it, you just felt lactic building in your quads, no matter how fast or slow you went. And it was only really incrementally so fast. So, um, I know people have talked about how frustrating it is and I get it. I also have thought it, it's a machine though, that makes so much more sense in these types of races, just because you're not dealing with that friction with the carpet, having to bring something to push the sleds on. You're also not having to carry around all that weight to put on the sleds. Um, the machine is exactly the same at every race. So consistency is really, I think the most important thing between these races. So it's fine, but yeah, it's, it's not really a station where you can, um, I try to make big moves or anything. You just kind of try to get your, your time in with it. Now for me, despite the fact I was really tired and gassed out and I, I went out too hot and suffered through blood out through the end. I went almost 45 seconds faster on the tank than I did in my deck of strong, just from oh, really? the experience of using it and, and, and feeling it better and knowing, okay. Mm -hmm. And pushing a little bit differently, pulling in a different manner. Like I did the walk back and row, walk back and row. And yeah. that worked better for me. And I do think that, I do think you can get better at it. You can make time at it. Yeah. You know, and well, I did talk to Ryan Kent about it too, and he has one at home and he's, he did say too, you kind of get a feel for like that optimal level of push where it mm -hmm. can move the fastest based on what you need to do. 
yeah yeah so i think that could definitely be played with so that mm. we're off to that and then you know you you're, you're kind of where you are at this point so yeah. then and then but you had your burpees and and your burpees are your your world yeah yeah i was my when i kept visualizing this race i wanted to be like within striking distance more of the podium at the burpees and then just try to like go lights out at the burpees and see what could happen yeah. um but yeah they had too much time on me at that point um yeah so but i still hit them hard and um those are all those are always fun for me it's there's very few movements that benefit a short body and that's one of them <laughs> you kind of got it at the um, beginning at the end right in the lunges and then the burpees yeah. it's at the beginning of the the burpees. yeah nothing else so yeah yeah i felt good finishing um yeah, it like the the three stations in the row there, the bike and then the ball and then the sled. Just they do kind of slow me down a little bit, but I thought yeah. the ball you actually you had a pretty good. It didn't seem that bad. Like you didn't seem to lose a lot of time there or anything. You seemed to keep up. No, and again, it's not one that you can really do that much faster, so I did try to use that one to recover because coming off the bike that run was probably my slowest. Yeah. And I just felt like my heart rate was so jacked after the bike. Um, so I, I was anticipating using the ball over the wall to kind of calm my system back down a little bit. So, I mean, I'm sure I could do it a little bit faster. I saw the way Holly did it and she was really speedy on the coming around. That's the only really, the ball is not that significant um, of a weight. So, I mean, Vivian made it look like it was five pounds though. She would like flick it with her fingertips, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's still the ball itself doesn't take that much out of you, but it's the figuring out how to quickly go around the, 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 the ball thing. All right. And then, so that, that, you know, you ended up, you had sixth place with really considering that field, that's not a bad debut. There's nothing wrong with that. You're coming back from it. It's a good debut it was a fast field and all worked out well. Then yeah. we went and let's just, we won't go in detail to do the whole thing, but we went to the relay and this yeah. was you and Lanny and I'll just let you like your guys plan. What were you guys planning to do here? Yeah. So, um, Lanny came in and she was, our plan was super simple. And again, because we'd never done this event, we didn't really know any other strategy that would have made more sense. So Lanny was just going to do all the running and I was going to do the stations easy peasy. You have to do the first and the last 500 together. Um, I, we did say that if, um, so the sled is before the last run that she might take uh, a length or two in there just to give me a little bit more legs to try to run with her that last 500, um, which, which she did. And, uh, yeah, so it, same thing, like we, we, our plan was great. Um, my, but those stations, when you have those little breaks and you're trying to like give your partner the best opportunity possible to kind of stay in the mix. And we were really in the mix with the elite men, which was fun. Um, you hammer those stations so hard after each station, almost, I was like ready to vomit. <laughs> and then <they're, laughs> I, I, <laughs> so with, thankfully with her, the way it was is her, because she's doing the exact same thing every time. Um, I had a consistent rest. So I basically had about 90 seconds between, um, each of my stations while she ran her 500. Um, but with her, I warned her, like some of these stations, you're going to have like 30 to 40 seconds. So when I come up at this station, I kind of tell her like, this is probably going to take about this long, just so she could kind of mentally prepare, yeah. um, like her rest breaks in between like the farmer's carry was probably 30 seconds yeah. of a rest for her. Um, yeah. So then she did take a couple of the sleds and, uh, yeah, we were right in there with some of the elite men too. It was so fun to watch. She would catch them on the runs and then they'd gain a bit on the stations and they were so intensely trying to stay ahead of us. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, yeah. And then, so the, she took a bit of the sled when we did the last 500 together, it was it trying to run with her in that last 500 just, and again, that bike, like I was the closest I've ever been to vomiting all day. And, um, and then, so the last 500, uh, 
while we're running it, everything started to kind of seize. My calves started to go. My upper body was cramping. Like I was like, if I ran right into the burpees and grabbed it and started, I probably would have puked for sure. So I said, do a couple burpees, Lanny. I have to get to my breath. So she did five burpees and then I hammered the last 15. So um, yeah, we finished about 70 seconds shy of the record. So in hindsight, when we talked about it after, because she does a bit of work on the machines at a CrossFit gym is we would have done it where I did like three or 400 on the machine and, or she started and did the first one or 200 and then I could hammer out the last couple hundred just because trying to maintain and like I said the machines are hard for me to keep uh, a really good pace for that 500 meters so if I had to do 300 even or 400 then I think our overall time would have been better because her running it would is phenomenal no matter what even if she does 30 seconds on yeah. the skier or a rower so I think if we did it again we might split up the stations even just a little bit more so that said we were you know we were hoping when you went in there we were hoping maybe you guys would get the record and that that would be the cool thing but you know you guys did still get a monstrous win. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not sure, but somewhere in the neighborhood of six minutes over second place. Yeah. Six something like minutes. that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's something to see and something to build on. And it was a great, great effort. Um, and I don't know about you, but I thought that the relay, like I, I know team stuff is fun, but I, that was one of the most fun races I've ever done when I did the relay. I loved it. And it was oh, like, yeah. it's like, red line fall over recover <laughs> red line fall <laughs> <Yeah>. over recover <laughs> yeah it was awesome it was great i just love that it was just the kind of thing i like to do i yeah i mean i'll tell this story too because uh because it was very funny it was um so me and my my pal tony we did our team we run around we ran the first together he did the lunges i ran 250 he ran 250 and the plan this was the plan all the time was i and i'm pretty decent at the rower that i would do the whole row and I grabbed that rowing machine. And I'm like, I'm going to make my mark because I wasn't super happy with my individual performance. So I'm like, I'm really good. So I'm pulling like 130, just hauling on that thing. And then all of a sudden, Yancey comes in front of me and starts going, Dave, we got to get these guys on the podcast. And he's talking to the Ra- the Spartan Ram guys. And I'm like, right now, man, <laughs> it's not a great time to talk. So I'm like pulling as hard as I can. And he's chatting. I don't know. It was it was good fun. And we will have them on. I uh, can't wait to talk to them. <laughs> That'd be great. But, yeah. it's but anyway, like not the time, Yancy. Not the time, Yancy. I'm, 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 I'm literally going to shit my pants here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yancy uh, was so awesome all day. Like, so if you oh. were watching him and again, he came in on a red eye, I think two hours of sleep and he probably fist bumped every person in in the stadium um he was in the mix all over all day long cheering everybody on like i saw him everywhere all day long never stopped and then as soon as they were done the last awards he grabbed his bag and he was running down the pier to go catch a flight (laughs) yeah yeah he was right right out the head right right under a cab it was crazy but um i had my i had the experience on the bike and it was very similar to kevin gregory where um you know uh, we we split it up though uh tony the first 12 i did the last 13 and I was cranking on that thing. And I'm like, I'm not letting this thing hit 60 seconds. I'm not going to that triple digits. I gotta be. And mm-hmm. yeah, I, I finished it and I stayed under the 60 and then Tony took off and, and I like fell off the bike and lied on the ground for about 20 seconds. <laughs> Just kind of going, yeah. I don't know that I can make it to the wall over things in time. <laughs> or, or, <laughs> or I don't know if I, I had to run. Cause I'm like, I don't know if I can get up by the time he gets back in 250 to get in position to run. But yeah. we did, we made it. And, it's just a, yeah. just a great event. The relay was just so much fun. I know. Yeah. So we were with Glenn and Kevin who were giving Rich and Ryan a bit of a run for their money through some of that. And yeah, Kevin again did all the stations. So they mm-hmm. had the same strategy as us. So, and he always had the spot right by the entrance, which is kind of the goal landing are like, get a spot. So he would usually be finishing when we were about coming in and he would always be laying flat on the mat. And I was like, <laughs> I almost wanted to like roll him over. <laughs> Like I, we came up to the bike and I was like, he's laying right beside the bike. I want, I'm like, Kevin, just roll over a little bit. So I can get on here. <laughs> he's I think like, oh you, yeah. And he did. He just rolled over. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen you trying to roll Kevin. Cause he's not a little man. <laughs> I'm I know. He is not a little man. No he's a beast. Yeah. And, and, and just as much as he is a beast, Glenn race is fast. 
Yeah. And I did not know Glenn was that quick. I knew he was a good runner, but I didn't know he was that fast. Like he can haul. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they, I, they, he's, he's a former track guy too, right? Yeah, I think so. And for the, I'm going to say for the first seven stations, right up to that bike, mm -hmm. they gave they gave Rich and Ryan everything they wanted. You know, like yeah. you know, at that I think at that point though, they just couldn't keep it up any longer. But yeah. but wow, did they ended up putting in the third fastest time ever? Yeah, and so again, you're looking at two different strategies, right? So Rich and Ryan Kent had a strategy where they were splitting up everything, just like the two women who have the current record. Mm -hmm. And I think just that overall pace in those stations, and then when you're only running 250, that's an all-out sprint too. So if you have two runners, again, that are kind of similar. So right now, that strategy is what's holding both world records. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, it has to be said too. like hats off to Rich and, and, and Ryan Kent, like that was just, they, they, they beat the record and, and they, they, by a couple, like minutes, two minutes, they were 25 minutes. Yeah. I don't think it was 27. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the old record is, but I knew, oh, okay. I knew they, I, I can't remember now, but I do know they beat it and they like, they were flying. They were just, they were, they were yeah. a sight to behold just that yeah. kind of speed and they maintained it so well. And they just, it was hard to find flaw in anything they did on that race um, yeah. as well. an individual again, first and third and Nick Riker, Nick Riker with a PR was amazing performance. He was, he ran what I thought was the smartest race of the day. Yeah. Like he just yeah. played his cards perfectly to within his skill set. He seemed prepared and did it really well because he has had ones in a past where he, past where he goes out too fast and blows up this one. He just played it perfectly um, mm -hmm. as well. And, and on the women's side, Vivian, massive PR just showing her strength how well yeah. she could do uh Holly Hughes honestly kind of out of nowhere in my mind yeah she's like she's done it before right I'm not sure that she has like I hadn't I thought she had done whether it was a strong or a mile one of them oh, I think she I, I think she did a mile I think you're right yeah yeah and again she she's a runner and uh yeah she but it looked to me like she was going to hammer the machines and not lose time on those. And she ran a super smart race. And the finish of that was super exciting too. Holly and Laura burpee for burpee. Um, Holly just had a better position or sorry. Yeah. She had a better position on yeah. the mats closer to the finish. Yeah, line. It just came down to, she was two mats closer than Laura. And that was the difference in the race. Like yeah. it said, I think it says three seconds on the results, but it, it was not three seconds. It was like one. <laughs> it was that close. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was it was it was so good. And they were amazing athletes. Everybody around just it was a great event. Great athletes. But like I said, there are some things that came up and we'll start with people saying that, like, OK, the, the twisting lunges and also, well, we did have some people I saw look like doing some jumping lunges that weren't called by the officials. And, and I don't want to throw anybody under the bus or whatever by the by the judges. Or whatever. But the big question here is twisting lunges. Are the twisting lunges legal by the rules? So, according to the rules here, let's see, do, 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 movement standards. From a vertical position, the competitor steps back to begin the reverse lunge movement. At the bottom position, the knee must, knee must be touching the ground. The knee must be below or behind the hip. The front foot flat on the ground. At the top of the rep, there must be full body lockout. Knees are full extension. Hips are at full extension. Split squat jumps are not permitted. Both feet must be on the ground at the top of the rep before you begin the next rep. Rep is considered complete. Once the competitor reaches full hip and knee extension, competitor must alternate legs on each rep. Um, so from that standard, to me, the twisting rep seems legal. However... I do see a lot of people doing it and not fully extending at the top. Mm -hmm. So I think if you fully extend at the top, you're fine. If you don't, it should be a no rep. Yeah. And the only thing that it said that it could be slightly open to interpretation, but it just said that your knee has to be behind your hip. So as long as your twisting lunge isn't too much off to the side, mm -hmm. then, and it doesn't, doesn't say it doesn't say it has to be directly behind no no it so doesn't. then yeah okay so I'm, 
that's one of the ones I'm okay with. I think it's fine. And uh, a lot of people were saying maybe Rich and Ryan Kent, especially in the relay, weren't doing it. And I mean, from the angle I had and stuff, I don't, I can't say. Um, I couldn't tell if they were getting full extension. If they were getting full extension, then it's fine. From the athlete perspective, if the judge is not calling a no rep, then it's a good freaking rep and away you go. Yeah. So, yeah. So that, that's the way the game's played. Uh, it may not be perfect, but say la vie. So twisting lunge, I'm saying, okay. Mm-hmm. So the next one was box jump overs. And we all do this step thing. All right. Everybody's doing the step thing, kind of that hop, that step thing. Now, this is another one where Rich and, <laughs> Rich and Ryan Kent got a little black because they do a system where they swing their foot closest to the box, kind of over the corner step on and jump over um and that said does well and we'll read the rules it doesn't come up that they're going straight across so ah let's see here movement standards only competitors feet may touch the top of the box which if i remember right when yancey did the run through he said he said he said if your hand touches the top it's not a big deal just he said just try not to do it because you guys are elites yeah, okay. but he said if you end up crawling across it, he said whatever, it's just slow. <laughs> All right, so, so despite the fact that's in there, that seems to be set. And I'm going to say these these room rules seem to be evolving. This is really new, so I think things will be changing and evolving. So, uh, only competitors' feet may touch the top of the box. Competitors may jump onto the box, on the top of the box with two feet landing, and then jump or step off the other side. Um. That's really it. Competitors must land on the top of the box. They cannot jump over the entire box. Competitors are not allowed to jump, step, or climb on and off the box. So I think these have really changed. So the only thing it maybe should have is I would say the the body must go be over oh. the box. And that's, that's one... where there was things where I was like, oh, when their their feet were touching the top, but their body was not was and that kind was... of bad. Yeah, that was something I kind of saw a bit with Rich, mostly with with, with Rich there is because he really skirts that edge line and he's moving quick. Yeah. Right. But I think and they, I think Rich and Ryan and Nick did a, a podcast earlier and it was really well done. It was a great podcast. And thank you for the uh, the nice comments. Um, And now I'm going to be mean to him. No, uh, <laughs> so I think the one thing they could do is they could put a piece of line of tape on the ground at the edge of the box and just say your feet have to come inside this line yeah right and then that should as long as your feet stay inside that line that means your body's likely going to go over the box yeah but again as with the lunges if they're not calling it a no rep i see no issue with what the guys were doing because if it's being accepted it's being accepted so be it i think though looking at this that though that rule really needs updated Yeah. And again, as we do these things, people are always going to try to find ways to make something faster and more efficient. And then, so when someone tries something, um, then, and you you don't like it, then you just, you add a rule that kind of fixes it. It's kind of just the way sports evolve. Yeah. I mean, like we said this before, right? Hockey has been going on for years and they're evolving rules all the time. Same with football, basketball, it's always changing and flowing. So yeah, right now that's just the way it is. So again, I know I, Give no grief to the guys. They were doing what was called an acceptable rep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one was an interesting room. Med ball sit-ups. Mm-hmm. And this one was was Kevin Gregory. And yeah, we were told in the pre-race thing that you just had to hit the ball to the target. So what? And, and then tap it over your head. And tap it over ground. your head, yeah. So what Kevin yeah, did yeah. was he literally, he barely sat up at all. And like, I don't, did you get to see him? You were probably on the run, but you watched the video. And well, he like, no, I saw him because I was coming in and I was waiting for his mat. So okay. I was watching him. <laughs> okay. So he was literally like shoulders a couple inches off the ground. It and then throw whipping it, from it. The ground. <laughs> whipping it back, yeah. boom, whipping it. And essentially yeah. really using gravity as his friend. And people were like, that can't be legal. And uh, so is it or isn't it? And here's the way it's. Uh, it's done. Um, we'll go to the movement standards. Rep starts when competitors back on the floor, knees bent, med ball behind the head, touching the ground. Competitor will throw the med ball with both hands at the target during or at the top of the sit-up motion. 
competitor must raise the torso so their chest is upright. At the bottom of the rep, the competitor must have control of the ball and it must, must touch the ground behind their head. Rep is considered completed once it hits the target. First glance at that or hearing that, that does sound like it shouldn't be allowed. Yeah. So it, this one was interesting, though, too, because when Yancey did his preamble with the elites, he said, he said, if you can sit up all the way um, and tap the the upright or the, the target, yeah. he said, then you don't have to toss it. And then he said, but if you're doing that, realize you're sitting up um, higher than you might mm -hmm. if you were tossing it on the way up. So the way he made it sound was if you can toss it earlier, you don't have to come up as far. He never mentioned having to be vertical. Yeah. And here's the thing. It doesn't say vertical. It says chest upright. And that is really open to interpretation. Oh, you know, like upright is. I'm not going to. <laughs> she wants me to look up the definition it's of upright right upright. now. So maybe, maybe it would have to be, there has to be space underneath the entire back. Okay. So according to the clinical definition of upright, upright means vertical. <laughs> I've been told perpendicular. or perpendicular. So either that's, way, that's a tough one to judge too. Well, so I thought I started thinking about that, right? And I'm like, okay, let's just say that's the case. In that case, nobody did it right because yeah. nobody was going completely upright, right? Like when you're doing your, that, that med ball sit up and you're touching it to your ankles or your feet or whatever the case may be, you, yeah. you kind of have to go upright to reach. Right. Yeah. So it's much more consistent. Whereas this, you know, I didn't see a single person go all the way upright, you know, no. like even you, you're not tall and you weren't going completely upright. Like nobody was. Right. It's yeah. So I, I think some rewording needs to be done there. Do I think bubbles technique should be legally allowed? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'd have to talk to him and see how fatiguing it was on him. Cause it did I look also, like he's... that would destroy my shoulder is what he did. It did look like it. He spent a lot, like it was fast, but it looked like he spent yeah. a lot of energy doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe it's, I think, you know, that's Yancey didn't seem to have a problem with it. So, you know, right. It's mm -hmm. his show. And um, yeah, clearly, like I said, it was entertaining. It was funny. Yeah. And it showed just how strong that guy is. Yeah. And yeah. He was throwing that thing like it was a tennis ball. <laughs> just... I know. <laughs> And really good rhythm and timing. Like he was hitting it to get it back yeah. perfectly. So, um, you know, we'll see. Uh, I'm sure that will be addressed. And I think that, again, that's another yeah. rule that maybe needs clarified and cleaned up and evolving. Maybe it's something to, most people are not going to be wanting to do that strategy. I, I wouldn't do it. I'm, a, I'm you know, I, I like to think of myself as a decently strong dude and I wouldn't do that. I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, he's, he's a different kind of man. Yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, the next one would be the tank push-pull. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is because of Mark Polzin. So the tank push-pull is really fairly simplistic, right? It's hard to say there was anything wrong with it. You push it across, mm -hmm. you pull it back. It's pretty much it. However, what happened is he went in and by no intention whatsoever accidentally grabbed one of the uh, the women's tank settings and was on the women's settings and he pushed it all the way across pushed it back and then started to push it again and one of the officials or spartan employee noticed ran over and set the setting to the men's setting uh, this was definitely caught by a lot of people so uh, I, I asked Nancy about it and he said the the that the the official caught it and changed the setting and, and so be it. Now I talked to Mark about it briefly and um, he said that, yeah, they switched it and, and he just kept going. I asked him if they made him redo the reps and, and they did not. So according to, and I'll read the rules here. I'm not going to read movement standards because that just, you know, again, pushed across, bring it back. Um, any violation of the rules will count as a no rep in the entire 10 meter set the violation occurred during. So according to that, you should have to redo this, the sections that were missed. Yeah. Um, so 
that I think was a bit of a miss on the judge's part. And this is, I mean, I'm not, again, I don't fault Mark. He was not told to do them and he put in a hell of a race. I was very, I, he really impressed me with his, his, uh, his ability and, and a nice guy, but that was something I think missed on the judge and the judge who f- switched it to the, the setting should have told him to redo the reps. Um, is he, is he in the top 12 currently? I believe he may be. So we'll have to look at that. With that time? Well, let's uh, let's take a quick look and see if I have it called up here. Because that's a bit. Yeah, that it, that would be disappointing. Uh, here we are. Oh, that's not the right thing. We're looking at the strong. We need the fit. Yeah, he is in 10th with a 32 dead. Now, was that the one he did there? Let's just take another quick look on here and see. Yeah, I don't know if then maybe yeah. in this situation yeah. it was. Yeah, I... So, I That's mean, it's, it's, it's too late now, right? Yeah. Like, what's done is done. And I can't say that any of the other people who had set times had didn't have things go wrong there, didn't have something that might have been a bad rep or whatever. So I, what's, what's done is done. Um, but yeah, I would think that would be probably the, the biggest omission that I've seen. And it's a shame that that happened to Mark because it is really unfortunate because it was not with any intent that that happened and he he was yeah he was in this killer race with glenn race they were going back and forth and it was very entertaining so i feel bad that 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 come down on him but i would also feel remiss if we didn't address it and and talk about it a little bit so yeah hopefully (laughs) that gets caught next time and um again and i've said it a million times if that bothers you that that happened well volunteers step up and get in there and help yeah, because again, a volunteer standing there who uh, was able to use their voice would have directed him first to the men's side because there was a sign in the middle that said men's side, women's side. But and again, when you're in race mode, you don't always see these things. You're just okay. looking for sled. And I mean, there was a lot of excitement around this race, too. So it's if the volunteer just directed him there would not have been an and, issue. And, and that sign was a big sign. So Decca had set it up, right? It was said yeah. men, women, it was pretty clear. But I think what happened with him is, you know, you're running in it and it's a bit of a smaller opening, the entrance to the zone. Yes. And on the one side was pretty much, you had Kent, Riker and Rich all right there taking mm-hmm. up the spot. So he just took the closest one, which just right. happened to be on the women's side. So say, let me, um, Other than that, the only other thing that came up, and I don't even have to read the rules for this. The only other thing that came up was Rich Ryan's burpees and the fact that his first however many reps, he didn't have the ram over his head. Wasn't picking the ram up high enough. Yep, so true. (laughs) I don't know what to say. This was one Yancey probably said three times in the spiel. He said stop trying to get six more inch like millimeters less of distance over your head just bring it directly over your head yeah and what happened was uh however many reps let's just for argument's sake say 10 10 reps in yancey saw this ran over told rich hey fix this shit and he did rich did the rest of the reps good now i again i don't blame rich because there was a volunteer right in front of rich counting reps that at no point counted in no rep. So in Rich's mind, he's racing, he's pushing hard against Nick Riker, and he thinks he's going high enough because they're counting reps. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. So he has no idea that they're not good. Um, yeah. Say Levy. So and and if the ref and if the judge doesn't call it a no rep, then it's a good rep. Yeah. And you don't always know how far you're going again when no. you're you're in that race mode and you're full of lactic like he probably you have no concept really of how far you're going unless someone says something no he'd been Even when i watched my video after i was going way too far back yeah. with my ram but again i didn't realize it you're just kind of like throwing it around yeah and he he had been redlining for like 31 minutes like yeah you know it's gonna be off of it so 
I don't blame Rich at all. Um, so for the people that commented, yes, those reps were no good. No, he was not penalized because the judge didn't call it. And Yancey can't go over there and all of a sudden say, well, I didn't see everything, but I think all your reps suck. So start again. Mm-hmm. You, you can't do that, right? It just doesn't work that way. There's no video replay yeah. in DECA. Yeah. So say la vie. It is what it is. Um, and I'm not one to usually say something like this, but I don't think Rich gained any advantage from it in the long run. I don't think anybody else paid a price for it. So it is a bit of a no harm, no foul. Should it be fixed? Yeah, it should. And um, that comes down to the judges having the confidence in themselves and the rules to, to call no reps when they belong. And it can be intimidating and difficult to do because you might be envious and, and awestruck by some of these athletes and especially in the elite waves, but you got to do it for the integrity of the sport. So yeah, here's, here's hoping next time, Rich, if I'm there, I'm going to, I'm going to no rep the shit out of you. I'm going to wave a sign <laughs> and then no one will bug you. <laughs> Rich, they'll put in a great race and, and a great race. So, and an awesome guy. So he deserves yes. all the credit. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was it. That those were my takeaways. Um, anything else grab you from the weekend that, you know, um, it was just such a good experience again and such a well done event. I love the setup of DECA. It's so exciting. It's also, as I'm there, I kept thinking about how much fun it would be to get way more people like from my gym there. It's an event that shouldn't be intimidating to people it's every movement is manageable um the distance is manageable like 500 meter repeats just 10 of them you're running 5k um it's just it's one of those things where if you want something to kind of get your toes wet in the hybrid racing scene or obstacle type stuff this would be the one for you to try yeah and just and so many people having such a good time like they had a great turnout people were going all day long and uh the open waves when I was volunteering, just, just characters having a blast doing their best yeah. and having a good time. And it was awesome. And they even had the, um, was it the wounded warriors or, or one of those Oscar, Mike. Oscar Mike, Oscar Mike out there yeah. at the end. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and I saw a story of the one man doing the brand burpees at the end. And he only had the one leg. One leg. Yeah. yeah it was just awesome yeah. to see. So it hit on a lot of stuff, but we have definitely shown like anything we do ramble on about how much we enjoy it and like it, and we, but it is not perfect. It needs work still. It is an ongoing process, but I do believe with somebody with Yancey's tenacity and, and determination, he is going to do everything to continue to improve it. And mm-hmm. uh, right now I would, I would recommend it so much like, and again, mm-hmm. especially that relay. So just yeah if you go do a relay yeah, <laughs> grab anybody it doesn't that. matter who just grab somebody and do it with yeah. Them. <laughs> yeah it's just yeah. so much fun and mm-hmm. you know passing that baton back and forth and yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh, um yes the bethany riley team will have to we'll go sometime <laughs> yeah we will <laughs> the invitation's still there you know <laughs> she came fourth that was pretty good <laughs> yeah yeah Awesome. All right. Um, that's it for me, Beth. You got anything else for today? Nope. Yeah. And, and again, so thanks for listening here and uh, hearing Morgan's side of her race, but also check out those videos. Uh, they're pretty awesome. They're up on YouTube. Dave did a fantastic job. There's a lot of behind scenes work that goes into how well of a job he did. So take a look at those videos um, just again to kind of boost the sport. Let Spartan know also um, how well of a job that Dave did. So until next time, keep crushing it. Thanks a lot. Take care.